What's up, y'all? This your boy Wingo from Jagged Edge, and you know I got soul. All right, Wingo. So last time we heard from Jagged Edge, you guys dropped J Heartbreak Two. Yes, um, just yes. talk about that album a little bit and the reception that it, it got. Um, J Heartbreak Two. Um, I mean, the album got awesome reception, man. Um, went number one the first week. Thank you, fam. We love you guys. Um, for all the fans who don't know, it's our main studio album. We dropped it last year around October. Get ready for that ninth album. It's on the way. And uh, we're just excited, man. You know what I'm saying? Excited for, you know, to still have awesome fans and still be out here doing it. Right. And I read that you guys are already working on the ninth album. Yes, sir. It's pretty quick turnaround. You know, uh, just talk about how far you guys are into that project right now. Well, actually, I mean, we're like halfway almost done with that project because really, you know, we, we record year round. You know what I mean? We're always recording. So we go into a project with 12, 13, 14 records, more, probably 20 records, you know what I mean? But we're not going to use everything. So, kind of, you know, I say 12 or 13, 14 that we actually might really consider for the project. And um, so that project is basically, you know, <laughs> ready, ready. Right. But um, I mean, we're going to, you know, whoever we end up doing our situation with, we'll get a, maybe a few records from somewhere else or whatever. But other than that, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, y'all get ready for that ninth album. We just got to, we, we got to come up with a dope title, though. <laughs> right. And on that album, will you guys also have production from Jermaine Dupri and B-Cops again, or? Actually, more, more than likely we will, because we just did a joint venture with, um, with, with Jermaine Dupri, whatever, at So So Def, um, Hard Case Records, and So So Def, we did a joint venture, so, you know what I'm saying, they're always going to be family, man. You know, we can always, those are go-to guys. We can always go get some hot, some heat from them. Right, and of course, Hope was the first single. You guys yes. followed it up with uh, Love Come Down. Yes. I think Getting Over You was also part of the mix. Um, what made you guys kind of go with, to go with Love Come Down rather than getting over you? Um, we actually did a poll, and we just, you know, let our fans pick. I mean, at the end of, at the, end of the day, our fans are the most important things in our lives and you know of our careers and, and you know our fans are, are are the ones that that actually go out and support and you know make us number one so we just did a big poll or whatever and and, and the, it was unanimous you know what i'm saying the, all the feedback came back love come down so it was all yeah. and that's one of my favorite records too we actually performed that record and we started um rehearsing it with a band and let me tell you something that, that song is going to be really fun to perform with the Al B. Shirts out. It's dope. <laughs> right. And you guys, something I've noticed with Jagged Edge, you guys have always been great at picking your singles. Yes, sir. Just throughout your entire careers. Um, are there any particular songs that you wished were singles? I mean, honestly, I mean, yeah. I mean, we've, again, this is a, we just put out our eighth album. So imagine how, many, how, much, <laughs> how much music we have out there. And just, this is what songs like for the rest of our lives. I mean, um, Head of This Household. I mean, it's, I, I could go on and on and on of, of records that, you know what I'm saying, we could have dropped or, you know what I'm saying, that I wish we had dropped, but, you know, ultimately, you know, you might only get four or five singles. Well, well, well now you might get four or five singles out of the album. Back then, you probably only get two or three singles, and you're on to the next project, so. Yeah, one of the ones that stood out to me, I think it was on your Jagged uh, Little Thrill, uh, Remedy. Yes, that was my a great God, time. yeah, that Remedy. I mean, that, that that's another one. That's why we named one of the projects Remedy. Right. Because, I mean, again, that was like, just like what you just said, it's like, you know, you can't drop everything, you know what I mean? And we've had, we've been overseas before the whole the whole night, and we've had fans, like, literally be mad when we get off stage because we didn't sing one of the album cuts, not actually one of the singles. I mean, we could do a, a almost two-hour show just doing singles, so. Right. Right, and of course you guys have had so many big singles throughout your careers. Um, just kind of want to briefly uh, name a couple of them and you know, just give me the first thing that comes to your mind as far as you know, the first thought. Oh man, um, Let's Get Married. Let's Get Married. <laughs> <laughs> One of the biggest songs ever. We are, we are the new wedding singers, I, I consider. Right. Um, I mean, this just it was a great marriage, man, especially with Reverend Ron doing the remix. He was an actual pastor. He could actually, actually marry you. And it was just an awesome marriage, man. Um, what a party at with Nelly. I mean, like a fun record. I mean, literally, I mean, the, just the sounds Jermaine used in the track. And just, I mean, pe people, it make, make, made people get up and dance, you know? Um, what? Promise. I mean, Promise is like another wedding love ballad of, of lifetime, you know what I'm saying? And it's, um, again, like we just, again, just thank, thankful for the run, thankful to still be here. And uh, we just want to let all our fans know we love them. Right. And of course, you know, you, you sing, um, but we haven't really heard you on too many songs for the right. entire Jagged Edge run. Right. Um, was there a reason for that? Was that by choice? Or? Yeah, well, basically, um, when you're in a group and when you're trying to establish a fan base, 
you want you, you don't want to too much to really confuse your fans. You want every you want every time the radio hear you, or every time you're trying to service a song to the radio, you, you or every time you you trying to put out a new record, you want your fans to automatically okay say hey that's jagged edge. You know what I mean? Sometimes you know people say it's lead singers, and all of us saying the same. <laughs> Basically, all of us you know kind of got the same type voices or similar voices or whatever. So um, we all all kind of can, can do the same dynamics with our voices. But I mean you know whoever sounds the best on on a verse, that's who go on it and. <laughs> it's been Brandon and Brian for, for a while, so I mean, I, and they're doing a good job, so thank you, brothers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the one song that really, you know, you got a chance to showcase your vocals with Seasons Change. Yes. Really got to go off on that song. Um, you know, just talk about that song a little bit and, you know, what the feedback was from the fans when they heard you singing on it. Oh, man, the fans, they go crazy. Every time they hear me, they're like, oh, I knew he was a, I knew he was a church boy. <laughs> but they, um, I mean, Seasons Change was another record that was crazy. I mean, much love to John Legend. I mean, I mean, I mean, you see what he's doing now, and um, I mean, we just respect talent, you know. At the end of the day, and you know, we we, we play to the level of our of our competition. <laughs> they make us step it up, man. So we just want to be thankful. We just we just thankful for it. That's all, you know. And again, we just love singing. I I, I posted some on Instagram earlier, and I, before I got on my flight, I was like, hey, mama, I just want to sing. <laughs> That's just it. It's all about singing to me. Cool. And of course, you mentioned, you know. Being in a group, you guys have to decide who gets to sing on what parts. Um, as far as singles, you know, obviously you guys all have your different influences, your different preferences, yes. like what your favorite songs are. So how do you guys kind of get to a decision on a single, per se? That's, th that is a hard part. Yeah. And I'll give you a perfect, perfect example. On my second album, we, um, I wanted to go ahead and drop Let's Get Married first because that was a no-brainer. Boom, you know, Let's Get Married, it's sound great. I mean, it's something that everybody can, can, can you know, associate with, but the guys and Jermaine, everybody was liking. He can, he can love you, and I liked the record, but it wasn't. A, you know, it wasn't better than Let's Get Married to me. To me, and that was just my my personal opinion. But we ended up dropping that song, and that song ended up doing a half a million singles. You see what I'm saying? So I never, I, I said it again. I would never ever question or question anybody's. You know, because you, you never know. I mean, like, you know. You, you create records, you know what I'm saying, for, for, for every song isn't a, a smash or a hit, but every song has a possibility to be, you know what I mean, so. Yeah, and then, you know, just of course, Let's Get Married, He Can't Love You, big singles. Um, you know, what do you hope to accomplish moving forward with Jagged Edge? You know, you guys have been in the industry for almost 20 years now. Yeah. What's, what's left for you guys? I mean, just putting out records, man, and keeping our fans happy. Trying our best to keep our fans happy. We want to we wanna make it to our 12th album, our 13th and our 14th. We want to put, put out a catalog where our fans be like, and go down to history, and our fans say, yes, Jagged Edge is a household name. That was one of my favorite groups of all time. And at, at the end of the day, that's what we want to set out and do. You know, I'm, I don't care about the star stack and all that stuff. Again, mama, I just want to sing. I enjoy singing and I, my fans have, have kept me on stage and that's all it's about. Right. And of course, just to touch up on your history a little bit, I was reading Brian Michael Cox's uh, Instagram page. He had mentioned that on the J.E. Heartbreak album, of course, that was your first time working with him, yeah. that uh, he had a fear that Jermaine Dupri didn't want to put out a single that wasn't produced by him and He Can't Love You was produced by B. Cox. So how did that whole situation happen? I mean, again, you know, like like the twins brought B. Cox over to the studio, and they were they, you know, they they, they wanted somebody who just played, cause you know they 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 they're awesome writers, and the marriage again, the marriage was there, and um, I mean. You know, I can understand Brian Cox's fear at that point because he was an unknown producer, you know what I'm saying, and Jermaine was a super producer, you know, he was a super producer. And a lot of times you do get into different egos or anything, you know, stuff like that in the business, but Jermaine wasn't like that. Jermaine, just want, he just wants to win. So whatever sounds good, he will. he's willing to put out, you know what I mean? He, he's willing to sign off on it, and that's just all it is. Right. And of course, on the side, um, you know, I believe you were working with pro on a project with RL from Next, as yeah. well as Q Parker from 112. Yes. Um, what's the latest on that? Oh man, we just um, we just put it on hold for a second. Um, we um, at the end of the day, man, those my brothers, man. Me and Q, we used to live together for like a year, man, back in in the early days of 112 and Jagged Edge. And uh, RL, he's just a really good guy, man. And we actually put put together a project. Um, we named ourselves WQRL. And um, we just we just put on the back burner for a second, cause what it is is that we're celebrating 
the genre of music. We're celebrating music. So the music is timeless. We could put this music out five years from now and it's still, it would still have the same effect. You know what I mean? And we did over like 25, 26, 27 records. So I mean, we still have to narrow all of them down. And um, at the end of the day, it's just, I mean, I'm just excited to be able to work with everybody in the business, man. You know, Drew Hill, much love to Jody. See, they just put out a new record. I mean, like, at the end of the day, I, I love music. And then as far as with that project, what are we going to hear from Wingle that's different from Wingle from Jagged Edge? Um, well, you, you, you hear a, a, a different flavor. You feel a, a, a different flavor, but you know, again, Jagged Edge. I, I wouldn't even have the opportunity to do other things without my Jagged Edge, without my Jagged Edge brothers, and without my Jagged Edge fan base, and my, you know, my, you know, my Jagged Edge career. So I just, I'm, I'm just very thankful and humbled, man, that people even want to want Wing on a record. You know what I mean? And I was excited when they called me. It was like, man, you know, saying we want, we want, we want you on a couple of records. And once that happened, it was like, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> it was on from there, man. So, and I'm just doing, I'm doing some solo stuff also. I mean, like, my whole thing is again, it's, it's about music, and we do so much music, and the computer is filled up. I mean, I'm trying to get this music out, regardless of the fact. I mean, I put it out for free. Who cares? At the end of the day, I just want people to to just hear hear the hear the craft, hear the creativeness. You know? Yep. And um, you know, that's all that I've got for you. Anything that you'd like to add? Again, we just love our fans, man. Um, thank you for supporting. Keep supporting your, your favorite R&B group, your favorite arm, your favorite genre of music, man. You know what I'm saying? R&B is not dead. Trust me. Hey, we all have one thing in common, and that's love. Love y'all.